name is Janet Canoop and um, this video is all about how to do hodgepodge yarn. Where I come from when you say something is a bit of a hodgepodge, meaning that it's a bit of a mishmash of everything, a bit of all sorts. Hodgepodge can relate to lots of different things, but in this case it's actually the different fibres that you're using to create a very hodgepodge sort of yarn. This is one that I created earlier and this is the type of yarn that's going to use up all your bits and pieces and then we're, I'm also going to give you some ideas of what you can use hodgepodge yarn for because as you can see it's quite thick. Um, but there's different sculptural effects that you can use, you can um, use up all sorts of bits and pieces and we're now going to go and show you those bits and pieces that you can include. Right, the other thing that we can do with hodgepodge is we can add in uh, things that we might have. In this case I've got um, strips of you know art, art type yarn that I've spun before and I've had you know just strands of it left um, and I'm going to show you how to add these sorts of things in it might be uh, some commercial yarn that you've um, that did that you've got that's really colorful that you like um, just pop that on the pile um, the other thing that you can also add is sometimes you have a little bit of single left over and um, from plying, if you wind that into a ball, I'm going to show you how you can add that in. You get quite a, a nice interesting effect when you add small amounts into your hodgepodge yarn. I'm just trying to find the particular part that I like. Um, here we go. So you can you can actually add in some singles and you can get these lovely sort of um, ragged little pom-pom effects almost look like ragged daisies um, in your yarn which can look really interesting. The only thing that I say to you is that as you can see here because this was a coloured hodgepodge these add-ins tend to disappear um, and so Add-ins can be really great to put into a plain hodgepodge yarn um, and then they start to really show up. And so because I want you to really understand the technique of the different add-ins, we'll leave these for a little later and I'll show you how to put them into a white hodgepodge yarn and you'll be able to see them more clearly and also understand the te or technique better. Yeah. Right, so um, this is um, a larger amount that I'm starting to put together and um, you know I, I'm just wanting to show you that there's a whole heap of different things here as, as, as with the other pile that I was but there's also different fleeces that I've found that I'm just adding in bits of um, ends of top that I've got um, also some natural greys added into this one um, and, um, and then some unwashed um, English Leicester locks that I had that were left over. Anything that is, you know, sound and um, uh, serviceable. Um, and as I add them in, I just sort of pull the parts apart so that when I come to core spin it onto my core, um, it, it will easily uh, go on. And of course then there's some more of this unwashed uh, fleece. And so once again, I'll just start to mix it by pulling it up the sides and pulling out from underneath and basically mixing it all up. Um, but you can see the proportion of white in this one is going to be a lot more, more in keeping with the rug, or the photo of the rug that you saw. 
then if you want to prepare it you can then um, wrap it up and just keep it tidy for when you're ready to spin it. Right, so um, I'm basically, hodgepodge yarn, really the name hodgepodge refers to the fibres that we're using. But in regards to the style of spinning for a hodgepodge yarn, it is definitely a coarse spun yarn. And the, fire, uh, the yarn that I use, it tends to be a mohair style yarn. Something that's really quite strong and uh, obviously has these hairy bits from it. Now I tend to buy these balls of yarn when they're on sale at the end of winter. Um, and I say mohair style yarn because I think there's about 5% mohair in this. Um, so you don't necessarily need to buy a, um, a natural far, a, a yarn that has lots of mohair in it. It just needs to have this hairiness to it because eventually what we're going to do is we're going to felt our fibres and these little hairs um, will help to catch on to the wool fibres and will um, basically give some stability to the yarn itself. So it really doesn't matter what colour it is, just as long as it's got some drape to it because um, as you've probably heard before, the, um, the core basically dictates, if you've got a stiff um, core for your um, core spinning, then your yarn will be stiff and so this one's quite strong, but it's still got some drapes, so that's going to it's going to pass on those attributes to the uh, yarn that I spin. So I'm basically going to just have that down on the floor in between my legs, and here is the very end of it. And I'm going to I've got a leader on my spinning wheel. Now I suppose really that the width of your hodgepodge yarn, the thickness of your hodgepodge yarn really is determined by the orifice that you have. And in this case, I have quite a, what we call a pigtail orifice and the yarn guides themselves are quite wide also. So I've got um, a, a really good setup for spinning a thick hodgepodge. Literally just going to tie my core onto my leader and I'm then going to be spinning in a what I call a plying direction or what um, a lot, lot of people would say is an S direction and um, or we can even call it anti-clockwise there you go so I'm going to just establish the fact that I've got good take up, which I have. I'm going to just soften that down a little bit. Doesn't matter if some of my core goes onto the bobbin itself, that's fine. Just nice to establish that take up. And also to establish some twist in the core itself. So don't keep an, a whole heap of hodgepodge fiber on your lap. Just have a small amount and depends on how much prep you've done before just take a look at it and make sure that it's open and that it's going to uh, work quite nicely goodness there we go I'll just open that a little bit there we go so what I tend to do is just to establish is to just sort of spin a small amount of single first I'm just going to there we go and I haven't got it going through the V delta so it tends to look like it's wobbling from side to side at the moment and I'm just going to spin a small amount of single to go on to the core not a bad idea to do this it just gives you some yarn that you can actually tie it off with. 
and there we go. So we've got that single established. We've got some nice twists established in our core. And now I'm going to start to hodgepodge. So I tend to wrap my core through my fingers just because I like to feel it coming through my fingers and I like to have control over the fibre. I have a reasonably strong take up and I am going to work uh, so that my fibres are obviously coming over the top of the core. So here we go. Now what I tend to do is I'm using my thumb and my finger to pinch onto the core, on the fibre, pinch so that I've got tension to pull against. Okay, My eyes are always here. There's no point in them being there really. I mean I might glance occasionally but my eyes are always there. So, and then what I do is I release and wrap on. So, and the quicker I wrap on, the more I am going to get that puffy look that I want. Now I've got quite a strong take up and this can happen when you first start your hodgepodge, even though my, and I could lower the head if I wanted to on this particular wheel. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross lace it onto the other arm of the flyer because that will slow down the take up. Just take out that little bit of vegetable matter and we'll continue on. And that's feeling a lot better now. So I'm stretching and bringing it forward. While I'm stretching, I can treadle a couple of times and that builds up twist. And now all I'm going to do is just let the yarn, the fibre, I'm sorry, go onto the core. Now the angle that I'm spinning at is probably, it's definitely not, if I'm a clock face and this is 12 and this is 6 and this is 9 <laughs> and this is 3, it's sort of just off the nine o'clock mark. It's definitely not a 10 and four. It's de de definitely just between nine and 10 and four, uh, three and four. Just so that I'm traveling down the core. And occasionally what I do is I use this thumb and finger to guide my fibers onto the core. Always remember you can stop whenever you need to. So if you come across some resilient fiber, you can stop and give it a better pull. And after a while, I won't need to, oh, interesting. I don't think we'll put that in. And the short fibers here. Now, these are very short fibers. So I could possibly take a few hairs out of the next fiber and just allow that to wrap around and it'll give it more stability. I don't mind the thin sections in between because all of this tends to smooth out as we go. Okay, so we're building up a little bit on the bobbin here and obviously this is only a jumbo bobbin and the overdrive bobbin would be uh, really good, but anyway. We can work with a jumbo bobbin and um, you can see that the yarn's building up quite quickly. You can also, if I just um, pull out some of the yarn, you can also see that the core is, you know, that there's really some twist going on there. But we'll be able to settle that twist um, once we've full or felted the, the yarn. So what I'm going to do now, it's sort of settled down. Um, I've taken away the cross lacing. Now what we're going to do is just to discuss and have a look at when we come across different fibres what we actually can do with them. So here in this part I've got some tops so that's just and look there's even a loop there. I'm not worried about it. Here comes some fleece so I'm just going to let that wrap around. I'll pull it open and there's a nice web and we'll just allow that to wrap around. Might extend this one out a little bit. I'm always looking here 
to see what's coming up next. And this pink bit, I'll pull that out with the next one. And I'll just, well, it almost disappeared. Here's another little bit. We'll see if we can't, there we go. That will just act like a nice little wrap around there. And you get into quite a rhythm. Here's quite a big lock of fleece. So, oh, look, I'll just let that stay on. There we go. A bit of a white section here, pulling the fleece open. So once I start to see that I'm getting a bit bored, I'll turn my fiber over. So here's a nice long mohair lock. I will just allow that to wrap around. Oh, maybe it was a piece of silk. It is a piece of silk. There you go. Look, goodness knows what you can find when you're doing hodgepodge. If you think it's just a little bit too long, let's just nip it off. Pull out some more white, let that wrap around. Oh, it's still coming. <laughs> and we'll pull out some more fiber and we'll just, if I put my thumb underneath the pink, see how if I just place my thumb underneath the pink, then that allows it to wrap on the surface. And now, we just continue to spin. After a while, you will just get these little ways of placing your hand. Just tighten up my tension a little bit. Move the hook along. You'll have these ways of just moving your hands that just allow the fibre to go on in an interesting way. But the bottom line is we're just wanting to cover the core we're not worried about the fact that some parts are thin and other parts are woofy. We're going for texture here. We're just looking at what is coming up in colour and enjoying just that, just, just the way that it just comes together in a very serendipity sort of way. It's really quite nice colour combinations that you get as you just open up the fibres and allow them to go on. Now that little bit there, I might just put a little web over the top of it just to attach it down. And here it looks like I've got another green long piece of silk. So we'll just break that up before we even start. So there you go. So you can see you get lots of lovely, interesting little bits that just come up. And just different colour combinations as you pull the fibres out. Which can be really lovely. You couldn't have planned them better. 